Hello and welcome to the garden. Well in this video I just wanted to give you a quick update on some of our peppers. So the smaller fruited sorts in particular have been doing amazingly well. We, we harvest armfuls of those regularly and we, we can barely keep up with them. They are so productive and I always think it's a really good idea to have a mixture of small and large fruited peppers because the small ones they're going to develop their fruit much quicker and they're going to be so much quicker to ripen so we've we've had tons of ripe peppers from those in the main greenhouses here we've got the larger fruited sorts this year they're all bull's horn types sometimes i'll have a mixture of bell peppers and bull's horn peppers but i've just got the bull's horn type they did better for us last year but I wasn't necessarily expecting them to ripen quite so quickly, but all of the heat and the sun have really brought on these fruits and now there's a huge crop to harvest. I thought I'd give you a quick look at the peppers and, and also what I said in, a, in an earlier video was that once they've set a few good sized fruits, much of the effort of the plant goes into developing those fruits. It's one reason why, with a very young plant, it can be a good idea to take off early flowers. Now, I never do that with smaller fruited sorts. And in fact, by the time I start getting flowers, I hope to have developed already a good sized plant and importantly, a great root system. But if you've got a young plant that's struggling, putting energy into fruit before it's actually grown a decent root system and a, and a reasonable framework up the top, can be detrimental. So removing those fruits give the, give the plant a chance to grow a little bit before it starts to crop, that can be useful. So that's always something to bear in mind. But, but with these plants, I haven't done that. And what tends to happen then is after it's set a few fruits, it will drop many of the next set of blossoms, not all of them, but, but some of them. And then as those fruits are coming to maturity, it's not really doing much with them now, they're just ripening, then it starts to set fruit higher up and that's what it's doing. So I'm very pleased to see that they are now setting more fruit, but I thought I'd give you a quick look at the plants and some of the fruit. Well, they vary quite a bit in height and this is one of the tallest now and, and it must be it's getting on for six foot. It's a good five and a half feet at least. And let's have a little look. There's a flower there. If I just pull the, no, that one has not set. You can see it's yellow in at the base there. That one's not set. Um, but there are quite a few flowers coming there. There's a young fruit developing now. One on the next node down. But then there's nothing on this stem until we get down to the, the big fruit at the base. Now I trained these with two stems coming up and that's the next fruit on the second stem there. And then we've got a bit of a gap. You can see it's dropped something there. That one though has set. We've got a new fruit here and in these nodes you always get a chance for at least one fruit and, but sometimes they will set two. I will leave both of these because very soon they're not going to have much of a crop on them. The next one up has set. This one, yeah, this one actually has set. So I've got quite a few fruit there to come in the second flush now that the main fruits are starting to mature. So looking at some of the fruit now, I mean this this is a really great size. It's a beautiful pepper and you can see there's just a hint of green left on that. But this would already be a really nice sweet fruit. Now, if you want to get the most fruit from your plants, you can pick them when they're green or you could pick them when they're almost ripe, something like this, and they will ripen a little bit off of the plant before they start to lose quality. I don't like to do that. I like to leave them on the plant until they are ripe. I, I want I want the flavour and, and sweetness in the fruit. I'm not keen on these big old fruits when they're green. I, I, I don't mind some of the smaller fruited sorts when they're green, but 
but these I really want to ripen up. So these are producing really fine fruit. This one, this one looks more like a bell pepper and when it first emerged I was a little bit worried about it. I thought I had some duff seed but it's not a bell pepper, it's just a particularly chunky one. Well there's a lovely cluster of three and everything is pretty big this year. I mean these are really great sized fruits. They're all rock hard, again not 100% ripe yet but very nearly there and, and I'll be happy to take them at, at this stage. I mean there's, there's one behind there, um, that one is fully ripe so that is on the menu very soon. But again this plant is pretty tall and there's more fruit coming a little bit higher up. I mean that one won't be too far behind. But then we've got that blank length of stem again. But up here, that has set. That's set. Um, the next node up has set. So all of these are now setting, and that is pretty good going in this, particularly in this heat, because it's it's not it's not ideal. I think. Um, I mean, these plants don't mind a bit of warmth, but it has been a little bit ferocious. But the blossoms are doing fine and, and the fruit are setting very nicely, so that is great to see. Well, it's a similar story with the reds, though they don't seem to be quite so prolific as the yellow this year. No idea why that might be. Uh, it's probably just a little bit random. But we've got some nice fruit here. These aren't quite so big and some of the plants don't have quite as many, I think, as, as the yellows. Again, these look pretty ripe. This one is only just behind, and at this stage, this would be a very nice pepper, at least to my taste, but I do like to leave them until they are fully ripe. They're not all small. This is a decent sized fruit, and a nice little cluster there, and more towards the end of the greenhouse. So. Yeah, they are doing they are doing fairly well. Well, it's the tomatoes that will always be our number one crop just because of the sort of things we like to eat during the summer and, and the tomato sauce that we prepare for the winter. My favorite thing to grow, the chilies and the peppers. And it's really good to see them setting more fruit because that means that by the time we get to the end of the year, I will have a fairly good, I think, second flush of fruits. And they do tend to come like that instead of, the smaller ones will just, just produce until they're tired and, and fed up with the weather. And that, that's fine, you get, you get a fairly even crop over the season, but with the larger fruited ones, that they put so much energy into those three, four, five initial fruits that you do tend to get a bit of a blank period before they then start setting again, but now they are setting again. That's good to see. Um, what else? Nothing else. That is probably it for this video. So lately they've just been sort of updates and odd little things and that's probably likely to continue because I can't do any videos right now on sowing and growing because I'm not sowing and growing. I am having a little bit of a break from that. We've got lots of crops in the garden and I mean, it's not like we're having to buy fruit and veg, not at all. It's very difficult to keep up with eating all of the stuff we've got coming in. So that's all great. And of course, because I'm not sowing and growing right now, there'll come a point towards the autumn when you know, the tomatoes are going over, the peppers aren't, aren't coming in in the same quantity and, and then of course I'm going to be short of stuff but never mind, I need to take a little bit of a break from it so it's just, it's just sort of maintenance for us at the moment but hopefully I can still make a few little videos and hopefully there'll be something interesting to look at anyway so that's why there's just this update on the peppers. Actually, 
comparing the the tomatoes and the peppers I think if anything the peppers are a more valuable crop because they are they're pretty pricey in the shops even in the peak of the season for them they are pretty pricey unless you happen to find your greengrocer has an offer on a tray of peppers then we've got a local one here that sometimes has has them available for good prices but in general it's quite an expensive crop and if, if you want to make something which has tons of peppers in and lots of the things I really like to eat have lots of pepper I, I like to make a yellow pepper soup and if I were buying the peppers I would think it was immensely extravagant because you, you need quite a lot of them and they're not cheap so it is a great thing to grow and especially if you're getting a decent crop off of them. But anyway, that is all for this video. Thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now.